Hello students, welcome to the English section of Gyandhut channel, an initiative of College Education Rajasthan. I am Jisreen, Associate Professor English. This video is the second part of Victorian poet Robert Browning, an introduction. This video is about art and craft of Browning as a poet. For his end design, the tool for his craftsmanship, the lyric poem which he preferred was dramatic monologue. American literary critic Emmett Abrams ne a handbook of literary terms mein dramatic monologues ke features is tarah se bataye hain ki ek single character ki speech jo poet nahi hota speaker ek ya adhik vyaktiyon se baat kar raha hai parantu listener ki presence ka clue bhi speaker ke discourse se hi milta hai monologue is tarah se organized hota hai ki speaker unintentionally apne hi temperament aur character ko reveal kar raha यह है पोइट का डायरेक्ट व्यू नहीं होता पोइट एक कदम पीछे जाता है और एग्जामिन करता है कि इमेजिन करेक्टर अपने संसार को क्या शेप दे रहा है और अपने अनुभव को कैसे इंटरप्रेट कर रहा है ड्रामेटिक मोनोलॉग को और अच्छे से समझने के लिए इसको साली लकवे और ड्रामा से कंपेयर कर सकते हैं साली लकवे इज अ सिंगल मैन टॉकिंग टू हिमसेल्फ और अ प्राइवेट डिबेट and the root meaning of the term monologue is a single man's conversation here the listener doesn't actively interrupt the current of the speech as a conversation by its very nature means a talk between two people dramatic monologues to other poets ne me likhe hain monologues common hai drama me bhi aur longer poems me bhi jaise paradise lost me saturn apne bare me aur god ke bare me at length bolta hai tennyson ne ulysses likha hai t s eliot's love song of alfred prufrock and robert frost stopping by woods on a snowy evening is there but kehte hain ke galib ka hai andaaje bayan aur Browning remains unsurpassed in the field of dramatic monologue. He has monopoly in this type of lyric poetry. Dramatic monologue ko ek distinct kind of poetry banane ka credit Browning ko hai. Through a single incident he makes us have a peep into his character's soul and herein he anticipates a modern stream of consciousness technique. He did not invent it but perfected it. He kept aloof from the political and religious turmoil of the age. He even remained unresponsive to the Italian struggle of for independence where he was living. When Mrs. Browning was so sympathetic to it, Casavitti windows, Browning had to fight no doubts. He is interested in depicting the history of soul, and therein lies the newness of his art. This slide establishes. how he discovered his ideology medium and style in 1833 he publishes his first work the autobiographical poem is a fragment of a confession it has almost no sales then he starts work on sordello in 1840 publishes sordello a long narrative poem in a dramatic monologue it gains a reputation as unintelligible and meaningless establishing browning as an obscure poet rather it becomes a byword for obscurity in 41 he begins publishing a series of books under the title bells and pomegranates composed mostly of plays and published by papasses then he became friends with dante gabriel rossetti charles kingsley and tennyson in 55 he published two volume poetry collection called men and women it includes most of his best works including fra le polipi and andrea del sarto in 64 he published dramatis personae in 68 published the ring and the book a long narrative poem of greed deception and murder based on an italian story though it was a popular success it is now little read talking about this poem 
Ring in the Book. This is by far the longest poem in the English language and was long regarded as Browning's masterpiece. But like Paradise Lost and Fairy Queen, it has been more admired than read. The title is explained by the method adopted by ancient Italian goldsmiths in making rings. They mixed with pure gold a little alloy to harden it. Then they poured over it some acid which would eat away the alloy, leaving the chased ring intact. In the same way, Browning have added to the crude facts of story his own fancy to produce a finished work of art. In short, he is the ring. Browning took the story from an old book. It relates how Count Guido, who had murdered his innocent wife, Pompilin, was arrested, tried, and sentenced to death in Rome, 1698. This story is expanded by Browning into a series of 10 long monologues, in which the same story is repeated with the variations depending upon the prejudices of the speaker. His aim was to show how truth is distorted by interested persons. The poem's length has gone against it. From his trajectory, here are some noteworthy poems of his career. My Last Duchess, Grammarian's Funeral, Andrea del Sarto, Ravi Venezra, Fra Lipolipi, Bishop Otters' Tomb, and Prophelia's Lover, The Last Ride Together, Crosspies. And now let's have talk in brief about some notable poems. The first one to begin journey with Browning. My last touch. There is an imaginary speaker, the Duke, who addresses the representative of the girl he hopes to marry. He unintentionally reveals himself as a tyrant who could not tolerate his first wife's independence. He is a despotic, wishing to limit the freedom of another person. My last touch is a good, simple poem, but it has it has set the tone for the subsequent poems, such as Fra Le Polipi, and Andrea del Sarto. Now, after this point, the characters become more subtle and complex. Our response is also usually a mixture of sympathy and judgment. Now there is a tension. After this point, there is a tension between a rational or liberal society and the speaker's mind. The next point, Andrea del Sarto. Perhaps the most brilliant of Browning's dramatic monologue is about the faultless painter. Technically flawless, his paintings never reach the level of such painters as Raphael or Michelangelo, for he lacked the fire of inspiration. In this monologue, he bewails his lot to Lucrezia, who is corrupt and shallow-minded wife, with whom he was infatuated. He had aspiration and he knew the value of high ideals. Ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp. Oh, what's heaven for? But he lacks the will to achieve it. His passionless, listless temperament was responsible not only for his artistic failure, but also for his moral degradation. He had neglected his parents. He had been false to his patron Francis I, the French king. He has misappropriated the money entrusted to him to buy works of art for the king. But like a weak fatalist, he is resigned. All is as God overrules. He consoles himself with the thought that perhaps in the new Jerusalem, there will be four walls to be painted by Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Michelangelo and himself. The next painter, Fra Lipolipi. Geniuses are celestial forms, not beasts of burden. The friar artist was found fond of sensual pleasures and delighted not in ideal beauty, but he loved the beauty of this real world. Oh, oh, it makes me mad to see what men shall do and we in our graves. This word is no blot for us, nor blank. It means intensely and means good. Abhi Ben Ezra. This is Browning's own philosophy put in the mouth of a rabbi that God, our worth to God includes all that we aspired to be. Were not God designed a perfect whole for us? 
the last right together in this point the lover requests one more right the last together after being rejected the request is granted and he is rejoicing in a spiritual self satisfaction for who knows but the world may end tonight the instant made eternity he contrasts his failure with the failures of statesman soldier poet sculptor he at least had a partial ful fulfillment which is denied to them for furious lover early 20s ki poem hai and it was published in dramatic lyrics in 1842 for firstly this was linked by browning to other poems under the journal title mad house cells it offers a clue to our understanding of porphyria's love uh, rather uh, being a dramatic monologue it's a sally love key because the lover is speaking and he has murdered porphyria he is a jealous lover and it's a penetrating study of a type of neurosis the bishop orders his tomb the speaker in this poem is a 16th century roman clergyman roman clergyman john ruskin famous victorian poet observed about this poem this poem tells us about bishop cunning and guile like worldly person who values wealth simple pleasures and doesn't hesitate even to steal and lie bishop's rich imagination offers a rich complex in ever fresh poetic delight इस पोइम के अंदर एक बिशप है जो मरते समय अपने बेटों को बता रहा है कि मेरी टूम आप किस तरह की बनाना और वो बताते वक्त हम उसकी फेक जो रिलीजियसनेस है और जो रेनेसा पर्सन का होल रेनेसा पीरियड की जो इनकन्सिस्टेंसी प्राइड हिपोक्रेसी लव ऑफ आर्ट लग्जरी गुड लेटिन एवरीथिंग कम्स इन टू दिस वन पोइम the poem laboratory it's also a study of revenge and jealousy and here the protagonist is a woman this whole poem is about plotting revenge and taking steps to get it now take all my jewels gorge gold to your fill you may kiss me old man on my mouth if you will she is trying to have poison to murder his lover After these miscellaneous poems we come to the love poems of Browning his own intense love affair and elopement with Elizabeth Barrett Browning has given greatest love poems to english literature like uh, by the fireside one word more o oh, lyric love other love poems where he mentions favorable or unfavorable situation and strange and unconventional paths are the evelian her last ride together meeting at night confessions statue in the burst meeting at night from these poems in the discussion about his poems we can have a concept about his we can have perception about his interests as far as his interests are concerned on the basis of these poems we can say that he is a poet of love love is the other name of god for browning love is the supreme experience and function of the soul although his dramatic monologues are essentially the utterances of fictitious figures nevertheless certain basic attitudes and uh, opinions occur in these points and they may easily be taken as browning's philosophy he had no faith in the theory of art for art's sake he believed art for life's sake and his poems are intimately in touch with the reality and life and all his poems have a philosophy and the philosophy of browning is the philosophy of a man looking at the world with more than a glimmer of hope in his eyes he is altogether hopeful about the fate of man not only in this world but also in the next world he believes in the immortality of human soul and its salvation in his optimism springs from his faith in god when he says God is in heaven and all is right with the world. He doesn't mean that men should just leave everything upon God. His chief emphasis on the continuous human endeavor, one of his most personal 
points, cross buys, where he says, I was always a fighter. So one fight more, the best and the last. And the other main interest of his, uh, besides philosophy and love, his interest is art, art of the Renaissance. He interprets the spirit of the Renaissance in such poems as a Grammarian Funeral, Fra Lippolipi, Andrea del Sarto, Bishop Otters' tomb at St. Parikh's church. Browning tried to answer questions about an artist's responsibilities and to describe the relationship between art and morality. He questioned whether artists had an obligation to be moral and whether artists should pass judgment on their characters and creations. Browning was interested not in movements, but in men and women, men and women as individuals. Browning had much longer to wait for recognition than Tennyson. A complete contrast to lyrical Tennyson, the thinker Browning had to wait. He has affinities with Dunn among his predecessors and with Meredith and T.S. Eliot among the moderns. It's easy to see why he is preferred to Tennyson today because of his exploration of the marginal in his poetry. A vital energizing force called Browning is in deep sympathy with weak, unheroic and unachieved, not denying the natural for spiritual. So this is a modern element in Browning's poetry which has made him popular with the moderns. In conclusion, we can say that his poetry craft established him as a gifted poet, matchless, realistic, conversational, keen artist and keen scholar. With his familiar, direct and unconventional method of speech, often lacking a formal beauty, he did to English poetry what Steele did to English essay. His telegraphic style, inverted construction, extreme compression, condensation, contributed to his obscurity. It might be said that he is rough, grotesque, unusual, rugged, Occasionally, he might be careless now and then, but there can be no denying the fact that he was a deliberate and conscious artist who knew perfectly well what he was doing and who did it in the best possible way. We can conclude with Yeats that clutter and chatter of life of world to him was life, was joy itself. I repeat the clatter and chatter of life, of world, to him was life, was joy itself. Tennyson me grace or jada delicate ho sakti hai. Byron me sweep jada easy ho sakti hai. Shelly me beauty or ideal ho sakti hai. Lekin in sari khubbiyon ka khub surat mishran ki se or me nahi browning nahi milega. After having a discussion of uh, browning's various poems and his various aspects, uh, let's have a look over the different questions, the main questions. The questions can be from the particular poems, like uh, write a critical, whatever poem is in your syllabus, like uh, write a critical appreciation of my last touches, write a character sketch of Duke, uh, or write a character sketch of Duchess, critical appreciation of Bishop orders is tomb. Whatever poem is in your syllabus, the question can be on its uh, critical appreciation and on the various aspects of Browning's art, like uh, uh, on his obscurity, Browning as a love poet, uh, on his dramatic monologues, uh, or about his philosophy. The various uh, reference books which I have uh, read for this video is uh, History of English Literature by Trivedi, Mundra, and uh, William J. Long. Hope it will be useful for you. Thank you students, keep learning, stay motivated, thank you.